Hello everyone, uh, today let's go through one classic lead code problem and um, also a kind of introductory problem to help people get into computer science and data structure and algorithms. Um, so it's lead code problem 242, valid anagram. Let's take a read at the problem first. Given two strings, S and T, written true if T is an anagram of S and false otherwise. So let's take a look at the definition of what is anagram. Anagram is a word or phrase formed by rearranging the letters of a different word or phrase, typically, typically using all of the original letters exactly once. So for example, number one, this S is anagram. T is N-A-G-A-R-M. It's not a valid word, but it doesn't matter. We just want to check whether this is a valid anagram or not. It is because for every single A, one, two, three, three A's, one, two, three, three A's here, one N here, one N here, one G, one R, one M, one G, one R, one M. So it matches perfectly. So this is meeting the perfect definition of anagram. An example, an example number two is rat and car. Apparently this one has T while this one has C although they have R and A the same. So this one is not a valid anagram. Um, constraints for this is S and T uh, within the um, length of five times 10 to power of four, uh, which doesn't matter too much. And S and T consist of lowercase English letters only. Well, this simplifies the problem, but there is a follow up. We'll talk about both of these. Okay, so first, there are multiple ways to solve this um, classic problem. Um, first way is that we can sort both strings. So this string is formed by concatenating characters. So if we sort all of the characters based on the ASCII uh, order, then we have both strings in sorted order. We can just compare whether these two strings are equal. If they are equal, then we know it's an it's a valid anagram, otherwise it's not. That's one way. But this way, the time complexity is going to be O of n times log n, because we need to sort it. This n stands for number of characters in both given strings. All right, uh, we can just quickly implement this first solution first, then talk about it. Okay, so first uh, we can convert all of uh, S chars convert all of these to an array and then we can sort them sort them we sort as chars t chars and then what we can do is that we can just return as chars equals new string T chars. Um, as simple as this. Let's let me give it a try to hit run. It's accepted. Hit submit to see. All right, it's accepted. So the gist of this solution is pretty straightforward, as I just talked about. We we'll just convert two strings into um, character arrays and then sort all of the characters in in both given strings so that we then we form two new strings right with the sorted with all of the characters in them in sorted order so that we can direct compare whether these two newly formatted string are equal or not if they're not equal they cannot be a valid anagram then with the code inside let's talk let's talk about the time complexity of this algorithm so suppose n is the number of char characters in s in s and t so first s and t must have equal length otherwise they cannot be valid anagram pair okay so then in this case time complexity is going to be n times log n because we apply a sorting algorithm here right for both of them in order so it's not multiplication it's just going to be o n times log n can we do better than this absolutely we can so follow up we can iterate on this 
solution to have a more ideal solution, which is since the problem consists only of lowercase English letters, which means 26 letters total, whatever duplicate or however formation you want these two strings to be, total number of unique characters is only 26. All right, with that said, let's um, shift gears and change this up to use. What we can do is that we can have one integer array which keeps track of the frequency of each character in S and T. For whatever character that we encounter in S, we'll just increment the frequency for this character by one, and we do this for T as well, but we'll just decrement the frequency for that character by one. So in the end, what we can do is we'll just check all of the frequency for each of the 26 characters in this integer array should be zero. That means every single character coming from both S and T should balance out. If any character frequency is not zero, that means it's not a valid anagram, whether it's positive or negative. It's not a valid anagram, right? I hope that makes sense. If that does, we can put, quickly put this idea into code as well. So we'll have a, an integer array. Total size is 26. Uh, we assume S and T should be of equal um, size. Or we can have a simple check here. If S length not equal to T length will directly return false. Or we can be more uh, if S, well, we don't need to check if it's now it's a simple problem. But to be more defensive, we should definitely check that. Otherwise, um, S and T might throw no pointer exception um, if it's nullable. For then we go through every single character. Since they are of equal size, we can use either S or T to check its length. Then we put um, S char at I minus A plus plus. So this is to give us, so the reason this is a, another typical classic strategy is that we can, if it's lowercase English letters, we can just do this character itself minus lowercase a. That will give us, that will shift all of the asking numbers to be between zero and 25 inclusive so that we can use all of these index to directly map, right? So in this case, counts zero is the frequency for A. Counts one is the frequency for B, right? So we'll keep doing this. For string S, every single character will just do plus. And then for every character in T, we'll just do minus minus. If it's a valid anagram pair for S and T, every single character frequency should balance out. So it should be all zero. So in the end, we'll just check if counts if i not equal to zero we'll just return false otherwise we found a valid anagram we'll just return true let's see hit run accept it submit it's running all right also accept it and um, now let's talk about time complexity of this um, algorithm so for this one, it's just going to be O of N. So you see, we improved the time complexity from O of log N to O N. Why? Because we only have one for loop and we go through N, just a, still is the number of characters in both S and T. We go through every single character only once. And in this case, we use some extra space, which is only O of one, because it's only 26 characters. It's a constant, so it's O one extra space. That's it for this, uh, the, the second solution to solve this problem, given the test cases for lead code for this one consist only of lowercase English letters. All right, then let's take a look at the follow-up. What if the inputs contain Unicode characters? How would you adapt your solution to such a case? For, uni case, uh, for Unicode characters, 26 is definitely not enough. It can have like Chinese characters, Japanese characters, whatever characters, which can mount up more than 1 million characters. 
So, and we don't know, they might not be consecutive in ASCII table. So, in that case, what we can do is we can come up with a hash table. What we can use, let me, let me just reset this one. In this case, how do we adapt our solution to for input that contains Unicode characters? We can use a hash map. The key of the hash map is just the character, and the value of the hash map is just the frequency in both strings. In S, still we increment the frequency. For any character that's in T, we still de decrement the frequency. And in the end, we'll just go through the hash map once to see if every single value of the entry in the hash map is zero or not. If any one of them is not zero, that means it's not a valid anagram pair. We return false. Otherwise, we return true in the end. I hope that makes sense. Let's quickly put that idea into code as well. Character, character, integer, map, hash map. Now we'll just go through the same thing. Um, since they are of equal length, we can use either S or T to um, get its length. And then we'll put map um, S char at I map get or default. S char at I default should be zero if we have never encountered this character before. And then we'll increment it by one because this character is coming from S. Then we do the same for the character coming from T. T. But for any character that's coming from T, we'll decrement its frequency by one. All right, this is the case. And then in the end, we'll just go through, uh, well, it's a character map key set. If map get C not equal to zero, in this case, what we can do is we'll just return false because um, each character, uh, the character pair in both S and string, they were not able to balance out each other. So we return false in that case. Otherwise, we we'll re just return true. Now let me hit run, accept it, submit, run answer. Let's see what's going on here. S Oh, all right, so I shouldn't miss that check. The check should be if s dot length not equal to t dot length will directly return false. I'm glad that that uh, need code does have this test case, otherwise it's not a is this test case a is this. And then we use this to be returning. Okay, accepted. Let's see. All right, this is one is this one is also accepted. But I'd like to test like a unit code, for example. For example, let's say uh Alright, just some unit code. Alright. This is a valid anagram pair. They are not uh, English characters anymore. So let me hit run. Oh, it's not a valid value of type string. <laughs> All right, uh, we find a bug of lead code or a feature that they don't support Unicode, really. All right, uh, but this is a valid uh, test case if we expand the problem to be supporting Unicode characters. Um, feel free to check it out in your own code instead of on lead code. But uh, this this is the solution to support Unicode, uh, Unicode characters. Time, uh, let's say n is the number of chars in S and T. Um, then time is going to be O of n still because we only have one for loop. We go through both S and T for every single character. And for space, um, for space complexity is basically the number of unique, number of unique, uh, unicode chars. This is the um, space. I assume it should be like um, similar to a constant number, like say, let's 
at least a million. It might not be over、uh, two million. Just my ballpark guess. I don't know, but it should be a very. It's a definite number.、Um, so it's, and it's not going to grow linearly as n. So that's the solution.、Um, I hope this video makes sense. We iterate、uh, from the simplest solution by sorting. Not super ideal. It's not super optimal in terms of time complexity. And then we go to the second solution, which is to use an integer array to to keep track of the frequency of each character in both S and T. And then lastly, we expand our solution to support Unicode characters. If the, if you think this video helps you understand、uh, valid anagram this problem and all of the different test cases, please do me a favor and hit the like button. That's going to help a lot with the YouTube algorithm, and I really appreciate it. And also feel free to comment down below. Let me know if you have any, any thoughts, comments. I really appreciate that. With that said, I'll see you guys in the next one. Thank you.